witches, trials, and the dark secrets of Salem. Welcome to another intriguing episode of Facts Intrigue, where we delve into the dark and mysterious. Today, we journey back to a time of fear, superstition, and hysteria, witches, trials, and the dark secrets of Salem. Our story begins in 1692, a time when the Puritans settled in the New World, seeking religious freedom. But in the heart of Salem, something sinister was brewing. Puritanism was a religious reform movement that arose within the Church of England in the late 16th century. The Puritans' goal was to purify the Church of what they deemed to be residual practices of the Roman Catholic Church. They sought to create a society rooted in their interpretations of the Bible, emphasizing personal piety, morality, and adherence to strict religious principles. Religious Beliefs The Puritans believed in the sovereignty of God and the doctrine of predestination, which held that God had predetermined the elect who would be saved and the reprobate who would be damned. They believed that humanity was fundamentally sinful, and only a select few were chosen by God for salvation. They viewed daily life and routines as opportunities to demonstrate one's piety and devotion to God's will. Strict Lifestyle The Puritans led a disciplined and austere lifestyle, shunning luxury and focusing on hard work, thrift, and religious study. Every aspect of their lives was seen as an opportunity to glorify God, from their work ethic to their interpersonal relationships. Entertainment such as dancing, gambling, and dramatic performances were typically frowned upon or outright banned due to their perceived sinful nature. Societal Norms and Roles Society was highly structured, with clear roles and expectations for men, women, and children. Men were considered the head of the household, responsible for the spiritual and material well-being of their families. Women were seen as the moral compass of the household, maintaining piety and nurturing children in the faith, but they were also subjected to the authority of their husbands or fathers. Children were expected to be seen and not heard, obediently following the rules and expectations set by their parents and elders. Role of Religion in Governance In Puritan societies, religion was intertwined with governance. The church influenced laws and societal norms, ensuring that communities adhered to Puritan principles. Laws were often derived directly from scripture, and religious leaders held significant sway in civil matters. For instance, church attendance was mandatory, and moral transgressions like adultery and blasphemy were punishable by law. Fear of witchcraft and the devil. The Puritans believed in the palpable presence of evil, personified by the devil, and were intensely afraid of witchcraft as a manifestation of the devil's influence on earth. Witches, they believed, had made pacts with the devil to receive malevolent supernatural powers. This pervasive fear was a foundational aspect of the societal paranoia that led to the Salem Witch Trials. Importance of Conformity Conformity to societal norms and religious principles was highly valued. Any deviation from accepted behaviors and beliefs could raise suspicions and lead to ostracization or punishment. This insistence on conformity and the intense fear of external and internal threats to their societal and religious fabric formed the backdrop to the intense and tragic events in Salem in 1692. In exploring the Salem Witch Trials, understanding the Puritan lifestyle and beliefs is pivotal. Their strict adherence to religious norms, their fear of the devil and witchcraft, and their structured societal roles created an environment ripe for paranoia and mass hysteria. The societal rigidity and religious fervor of the Puritans set the stage for one of the darkest chapters in American history, allowing accusations of witchcraft to spiral into a relentless and tragic witch hunt. The Salem witch trials are often portrayed as a relentless witch hunt, but could it have been something else? Was it mass hysteria that fueled the frenzy? Theories abound, but what we know is that accusations of witchcraft soon spiraled out of control. The accused, the victims of this hysteria were often the most vulnerable, and shockingly, the accusers themselves were often children. Names like Tatuba and Sarah Good became synonymous with the accused witches. Individual stories and a focus on the role of children in the Salem Witch Trials. Let's discuss a few of the individual stories and trials that took place. Tatuba's Trial Tatuba, an enslaved woman of Carib descent owned by Samuel Paris, the village minister, was one of the first accused of witchcraft. She was accused by Paris' daughter Betty Paris and niece Abigail Williams. 
to Tuba's confession, obtained likely under duress and the promise of leniency, included tales of riding on broomsticks and signed packs with the devil. Her elaborate confession fueled the hysteria, adding a sense of legitimacy to the fears of the villagers. However, unlike many others accused, Tatuba was not executed but was imprisoned and later released when someone paid her jail fees. Sarah Good Sarah Good, a homeless beggar, was accused of witchcraft by the same girls who had accused Tatuba. Sarah vehemently maintained her innocence, but her poor status and unconventional behavior made her an easy target for accusations. Sarah was convicted and subsequently hanged on July 19, 1692. Legend has it that her last words were a curse on the presiding clergyman, Reverend Nicholas Noyes. Giles Corey Giles Corey, a prosperous but contentious farmer, faced accusation along with his wife, Martha Corey. Giles refused to enter a plea, likely to prevent the seizure of his property. The court responded by subjecting him to pain 4KET door, where he was pressed with heavy stones until he died. Giles's stoic endurance and his last words, more weight, are a poignant reminder of the individual resistances against the wave of hysteria. Children's Roles Children played a critical and, in many ways, tragic role in the Salem witch trials. The initial accusers were young girls, including Betty Paris, Abigail Williams, and in Putnam Jr. Their symptoms, described as violent contortions and uncontrolled outbursts, were taken as evidence of witchcraft affecting them. The court, driven by fear and religious fervor, gave unprecedented weight to the testimonies of these children, allowing them to accuse adults with little tangible evidence. Their vivid and horrifying descriptions of spectral visions and demonic packs held the courtroom in thrall. The accusers were seen as innocent and pure, their words unblemished by deceit, a perception that allowed the children's accounts to be treated as irrefutable evidence of guilt. It's worth considering the tremendous pressure and influence exerted upon these children. Were their testimonies expressions of their genuine beliefs, products of the prevailing societal pressures, or perhaps manipulated by the adults around them? The credibility and influence attributed to the children's testimonies undoubtedly escalated the trials, leading to widespread fear, numerous accusations, and eventual executions. In unraveling the tales of Salem, the individual stories of the accused provide human faces to the tragedy, each echoing the terror and injustice of the times. In the role of children, their perceived innocence exploited and their words weaponized, illuminates the extent of the mass hysteria that condemned the accused to their cruel fates. The intertwining tales of accusers and accused, young and old, paint a vivid and haunting portrait of a community in the grips of fear and fanaticism. Accusations were based on spectral evidence, claims of seeing witches' apparitions. Those accused were subjected to harrowing trials. The Trials and Executions The Salem Witch Trials were a dark period in American history that occurred in 1692 in Salem, Massachusetts. More than 200 people were accused of being witches during the Salem Witch Trials. The exact number is difficult to pin down due to the chaotic and poorly documented nature of the events. The Executions a total of 20 people were executed as a result of the witch trials. Of these, 19 were hanged, and one man, Giles Corey, as we mentioned earlier, was pressed to death with heavy stones, which was a particularly gruesome form of execution. While the majority of those accused and executed were women, men were also accused. Men accused of witchcraft were not typically called warlocks as many believed during the Salem witch trials. They were referred to as witches just like the accused women. Notably, Giles Corey, as mentioned earlier, was one of the men accused and put to death. It's important to note that these events were characterized by hysteria, superstition, and mass fear. The Salem witch trials serve as a stark reminder of the dangers of mass hysteria and the consequences of unfounded accusations. Salem's legal proceedings took on a nightmarish quality, with notorious trials that haunt history to this day. The fate of the accused was chillingly simple, those found guilty faced the gallows, while others languished in squalid prisons. The tragic reality of the Salem witch trials is that many, if not all, of the people who were executed were likely innocent of the charges of witchcraft levied against them. 
the mass hysteria, religious fervor, and societal pressures of the time contributed to a situation where normal behaviors could be misconstrued as evidence of witchcraft, and many were accused with little to no substantial evidence. As a result, we were able to locate records for some of the people executed that later were found innocent. Bridget Bishop, for example. The first to be hanged on June 10, 1692, Bishop was known for her flamboyant lifestyle, which was frowned upon, and it likely played a role in her accusation and execution. And then there was Rebecca Nurse. A respected and elderly community member, Nurse was initially found not guilty, but the verdict was overturned after public outcry and spectral evidence, leading to her execution on July 19, 1692. Then we have John Proctor. A prosperous farmer, Proctor was vocal about his belief that the afflicted girls were frauds. He and his wife, Elizabeth, were both accused, though Elizabeth was spared execution due to her pregnancy. John Proctor was hanged on August 19, 1692. George Burroughs. The former minister of Salem Village, he was accused of being the ringleader of the witches and was hanged on August 19, 1692. He recited the Lord's Prayer perfectly before his execution, a feat believed impossible for a witch, causing some to doubt the justice of the trials, yet he was executed anyway. Then there was Martha Carrier. She was accused of being a witch and of spreading a smallpox outbreak. She maintained her innocence until her execution by hanging on August 19, 1692. Posthumous Exoneration In the years that followed the trials, the colony admitted the trials were a mistake and the families of those executed were compensated. Massachusetts Governor John H. Leverett exonerated several victims in 1711, declaring them innocent and granting recompense to their heirs. Various acts and statements have been made over the centuries to clear the names of those accused, including an act passed by the Massachusetts legislature in 1957, which officially exonerated all who had been convicted. The legacy of the Salem Witch Trial serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of isolationism, religious extremism, false accusations, and lapses in due process, reminding us of the injustice that can occur when society allows fear and hysteria to override reason and ethical considerations. Amid the chaos, we delve deeper, asking whether there were darker forces at play. Some believe Salem was cursed or haunted. Cursed or not, the Salem Witch Trials forever tainted the town's name. But could there be more to this tale than meets the eye? The legacy of the Salem Witch Trials. Today, Salem has transformed into a modern city, but the legacy of the Witch Trials endures. The trials have left an indelible mark on American history and culture. Those falsely accused and the punishment they endure is an incredibly sad part of history in our country that can never be undone. Conclusion. As the shadows of history close in around us, we find ourselves immersed in the chilling saga of the Salem Witch Trials. Were they the product of mass hysteria or something more sinister? The truth may never be fully known, but the echoes of that dark time still whisper in the winds of Salem. Until next time, keep your candles burning bright, and may you never cross paths with the unknown. Thank you for joining us on this journey into history's shadows. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell to stay informed about our latest uploads. And as always, share your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. What mysteries would you like us to explore next? Until next time, stay curious, my friends.